The first technique Ann Clark utilizes in ZoomTube is a combination of a finger glissando and an air effect that requires a residual flute tone. When first approaching this, we have to work on both of these ideas separately before we can incorporate adding them together. A traditional flute tone sounds something like this. Ian Clark is asking for something that sounds more similar to this. When producing the residual air effect, it's very important to create an extra sense of back pressure in your mouth to help allow the air to escape loudly. My approach to this is to bring both lips forward and to bring my top teeth down on the inside of my bottom lip. It looks something like this. The trick is making sure that our aperture hole is very, very small. If the aperture hole is too big, it will allow too much air to escape too quickly. The release of your air is being controlled by your abdomen. So your abdominal wall needs to be contracted the entire time you are producing this effect in order to have a full controlled release of the sound and air. Some flutists may have to experiment with rolling their flute in, rolling their flute out, bringing it side to side. The key is to find the most optimal position for projection. The next step to learning this technique is to incorporate the finger glissando. A finger glissando is simply when flutists slowly but surely slide their fingers away from the rims of the keys. A common mistake that flutists make is when they try to move too many fingers at once or too many fingers at the same time. The effect is not as clear as when we only move one finger at a time. Versus Working on this opening air effect, it's important to work on first being able to produce the residual air tone for 20 seconds, then incorporate the finger glissando. It's extremely beneficial if you map out and plan exactly where you want your finger glissando to be based on the time frame of the air effect. After you've taken the time to coordinate how your fingers are going to move, how your air is going to move, how you're going to conserve your air through these 20 seconds, then it will sound something like this. The next section in Ian Clark's Zoom Tube utilizes a combination of multiphonics where multiple notes are being performed at the same time, percussive techniques similar to beatboxing, and finger glissandi. For now, we are only going to focus on the multiphonic. This particular multiphonic will produce the tones of A and B simultaneously based on a different fingering. The trick to multiphonics is making sure that you aim for the lower note while blowing fast enough air for the higher note. In order to get started, I often like to play the two notes separately. Then I utilize the fingering that Ian Clark provides and I try to produce the lower of the two pitches.
Now, in order to bring out the other pitch as well, I need to bring my lips forward, particularly my top lip, and I need to think about blowing my air more straight across, maybe even up a little bit, rather than blowing my air down like we would for a traditional flute tone. Going back to a traditional flute sound, you'll notice that my bottom lip is very much spread across the lip plate. My aperture hole is quite small. For the multiphonic, however, my lips come forward and my aperture hole widens to allow my air to escape out rather than going down. As the air splits across, we're able to produce two tones at the same time. If I play the multiphonic with my tongue dropped, low in the mouth, it sounds something like this. However, if I bring the back of my tongue up to where it's touching my top molars and I keep the tip of my tongue down, it sounds something like this. Making sure that you have a nice combination of bringing the lips forward, widening the aperture hole, changing the direction of the air, changing the position of the tongue, and keeping your stomach engaged are all components needed in order to produce an effective multiphonic. <laughs> Singing and playing is another extended technique that is utilized all throughout this solo. In order to achieve this effect, the flutist will quite literally sing a note and play a note simultaneously on the instrument. If you've never tried this effect before, it is easiest to start singing the note, then bring the flute up to your face and try and play at the same time. I will first demonstrate this on a D on the flute. If I sing the note on an OO where my lips are forward and my airstream is coming out, as I bring the flute to my face, both notes will happen simultaneously. Once you're comfortable with that, Try and do both techniques at the same time. Overall, I find this technique to be very similar to flute playing. You're really just adding the addition of vibrating your vocal folds while you are playing. <laughs> In both of the previous examples, you may have also heard some percussive articulations, which are utilized through basically the entire solo. These percussive effects require us to really analyze our tongue placement, our breath speed, our breath pressure and energy, where our lips are, the shape of our aperture hole. It requires a lot of exploration and analysis. Luckily for you, I have done that already. <laughs> Ian Clark utilizes a lot of shuzz, chuzz, and cuz. Now, if you were to say sh, your jaw drops. Same with ch and k. The problem with this idea is when our jaw drops, it allows too much air to escape and we become so exhausted and overly winded because we're required to do these percussive techniques over and over and over for an extended period of time. To help conserve energy, it's easiest if we actually keep our mouth closed and our teeth closer together. In order to create a slicey percussive effect, the tongue needs to come up
to allow the air to escape out. If the tongue is dropped, sh ch k it's less amplified and we're losing way more air than we want to. When first working on these techniques, it's good to just pick any solid note on the flute. As I work on the sh articulation, I'm really gonna think sh, sh. What it does is it brings my lips forward and my top lip has a lot of space between my teeth. With this, my tongue is up high. That allows the air to shoot forward and be amplified. In order to get a big gust of air, my abdominal wall is contracting and really, really pushing a lot of air pressure through the instrument. Once I become comfortable with my sh articulation, then I'll work on the ch, not cha, but ch. And finally, I'll work on the ch. So with the k, the back of our tongue is already up based on how we pronounce that consonant. The trick is to making sure that you keep the tongue up, not now we're gonna string all of those syllables together. In order to make sure that our tongue stays up in the most optimal position for us, we're going to actually anchor the top of our tongue onto our top molars. Not and then we add the flute. One of the final techniques that Ian Clark uses in ZoomTube is the jet whistle. The jet whistle is another air effect and it is achieved by completely covering the lip plate of the flute by blowing super fast air and using the vowels oo and e, oui, and by rotating the flute from in to out. When you combine all of these elements together, you're able to get a really cool slicey air effect. Now, while there are a lot of more details that go into learning Ian Clark's Zoom Tube, hopefully these tips and tricks will help provide you with a solid foundation to getting started and learning this absolute masterwork of a piece for us flutists.